This video will discuss how to get the standard Gibbs energy of reaction from the standard Gibbs energy of formation of each of the species in a chemical reaction. So we have our prototypical chemical reaction again, the reactants A and B, products C and D. Each of them has a stoichiometric coefficient, nu A, nu B, nu C, and nu D, and all four are going to be in the gas phase. So from our previous videos, we have that the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to minus gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. The equilibrium constant is a function of temperature, but it is independent of pressure. We can also note that the Gibbs energy is equal to the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy of our system. So the standard Gibbs energy change of reaction equals the standard enthalpy change of the reaction minus temperature times the standard entropy change of our reaction. So we've looked in previous chapters at what the standard enthalpy change of reaction is and what the standard entropy change of reaction are. But just as we did for those cases, um, we can look at things like the standard Gibbs energy of formation, this delta F G naught, which is the Gibbs energy that we get from forming a given chemical species from its elements in their standard state. So this is equal to the standard enthalpy of formation minus the temperature times the standard entropy of formation. All right, so these values for standard Gibbs energy of formation, those are things that are compiled in tables. You can usually look in uh, the appendices at the end of textbooks or various online pages and find uh, compilations of these for common chemical species. So the Gibbs energy change of the reaction, as you might guess based off our previous discussions, is going to be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients for our products times their standard Gibbs energy of formation summed over all the products minus the same thing for the reactants. Their stoichiometric coefficient times the standard Gibbs energy of formation for each reactant. So this works once again because the Gibbs energy is a state function. It doesn't matter how you got from A to B here, it just matters what the final and initial states are. So we take the Gibbs energy of the final state relative to forming those from their elements and we subtract that to uh, the same thing for the reactants of forming those from their elements. So what we're really seeing here is the Gibbs energy of an intermediate state where we go from the reactants to their elements and then from the elements back to the products. Okay, so to summarize that in a little bit more of an elegant mathematical form, we have the standard Gibbs energy of reaction equals the sum over all the products, stoichiometric coefficient times standard Gibbs energy of formation of the products, minus sum over all the reactants, stoichiometric coefficient of the reactants times the standard Gibbs energy of formation of each reactant. So when we look these up in tables, they might have values like these, where they give us the standard Gibbs energy of formation in kilojoules per mole might be a reasonable unit to to describe that in. So we'll look at our uh, typical example reaction we've been using in this playlist, the combustion of glucose, which is C6H12O6 solid plus six moles of O2 gas gives us six moles of H2O gas plus six moles of CO2 gas. So using this formula here, I do six times delta F G naught of water minus 228.58 kilojoules per mole, plus 6 times minus 394.39 kilojoules per mole for CO2. Both of those are products, both of those have positive coefficients. Minus 1 is the implied coefficient here for glucose of minus 910.52 kilojoules per mole. And then minus 6 times, and O2 is the standard O2 gas is the standard state for oxygen, so that ends up being zero, which gives us a total sum of minus 2,827.30 kilojoules per mole for our standard Gibbs energy of reaction for the combustion of glucose. So the standard Gibbs energy of formation 
which are compiled in tables for common chemical species, allows us to compute the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, which can allow us to get an equilibrium constant, which will tell us at given conditions what the Gibbs energy of reaction is, even when we do not have everything in its standard state.